talking about guidelines for refractive procedures. And the basic aim is to highlight the important changes to be adopted by ophthalmic surgeons when they restart their refractive surgery practices. And refractive procedures can be eczema laser procedures uh, like classic PEPRK, PTK, only femtolaser procedures like SMILE and PEGIC implants. Eczema laser procedures might generate aerosols and that's why uh, due precautions should be taken to maintain safety. Uh, however, there are studies that have reported that prevalence of virus in tears is low and the uh, it has also been seen that eczema laser ablation of cornea in HIV positive or HIV positive patients is mostly safe. And uh, since these procedures are daycare procedures, and if they are performed with proper protocols, then they may be considered as safe procedures. Now, uh, th there are certain precautions that we have to take, and that is, uh, we, it starts from the time when the patient comes, the patient and attendants have to be screened, as has already been mentioned, so I won't go into details of it. The, regarding history of symptoms and travel to containment zone, thermal screening. Aryogya Setu app, once again, I would also emphasize everyone has done it, but it's very important because if in that app, if it is location enabled and it is written that you are safe, then if we check that app in the patient mobile and it's written, it just means that the patient is not uh, affected with uh, COVID. I and mean, that's an indicator that the patient is not infected. Now, one attendant per patient should be allowed. Uh, and uh, of course, in the waiting area, there should be a gap of at least one meter between individuals. Physical distancing has to be followed. Minimize contact with currency and online payment methods like Paytm, et cetera, as uh, Professor Mahipal had also mentioned. Now, COVID test can be done in these uh, cases. It's not mandatory. And uh, uh, while performing refraction, one should avoid touching forehead of patients. Many times we do it while measuring the working distance of one arm lens, so it should be avoided. The trial frame, pinhole, occluder, and lenses should be wiped with alcohol swab before uh, you know, getting the next patient. Uh, one should provide sufficient time to make the surface of these instruments dry after cleaning it. Uh, and CT should be avoided, it has been told about the IOP to be measured with Shears or Goldman and then the Goldman application telemetry prism can be cleaned with isopropyl alcohol. A breath shield has al already been emphasized, so uh, it is there to minimize the risk of uh, aerosol contamination. But once one patient has been examined on slit lamp, then the chin rest, headband, hand rest, and both the surfaces of breath shield should be cleaned uh, with isopropyl alcohol before examining the next patient. And an important investigation in the refractive procedure is the topography. And uh, it is not a aerosol generating procedure. It is very quick. It's a matter of seconds, a few seconds, and it is a non-contact procedure. So there's negligible risk of transmitting the virus. The, the chin rest and the headband, etc. all these things of the topography machine can be you know, cleaned with alcohol in between two patients. And the patient should be advised to wear masks during uh, topography. And uh, the patient should also be instructed to minimize touching here and there. As far as ultrasonic pachymetry is concerned, it can be done. And uh, after doing one patient, the probe tape can be cleaned with 70% isopropyl alcohol in between cases. And we should try to maintain maximum possible distance while doing pachymetry uh, and not lean over the patient try to maintain a safe distance. As far as OTA tickets is concerned, cap, three-ply surgical mask, sterile gloves, protective goggles is one which can be emphasized in these cases because these are, the exam laser procedures are, uh, can be considered as aerosol generating. So protective, protective goggles is something which is emphasized. The normal OT footwear and sterile disposable gowns can be used. Staff members should also be equipped with all these then one should avoid overcrowding inside the OT. And patients should also be asked to wear masks. And normally these patients don't change into OT dress, but uh, in, during uh, this period, they should be asked to change into OT dress and should keep own clothes in a plastic bag to avoid contact with any surface. Uh, as far as intraoperative precautions is concerned, uh, it should, uh, should be well draped and uh, it has been emphasized in the OT guidelines by Dr. Lalit Verma. Now, the ocular surface should be properly dried with swabs uh, because uh, if uh, there is collection of fluid, then uh, uh, there will be uh, you know, contamination with aerosols. And these swabs should be collected in dry sterile pouch and disposed along with the immediate disposal 
disposal of cone and tubing after sanitizing it. And at the conclusion of the surgery, you should discard used disposable instruments following biomedical waste policy. As far as cross-linking is concerned, uh, although it is, it depends on the discretion of the treating surgeon, but in order to minimize time, one may prefer doing accelerated cross-linking over the con conventional one. However, again, at the discretion of the surgeon, it can be decided. Pre-operative and operative precautions are similar as uh, the refractive procedures. Only one patient per OT rule should be followed. One should prefer bandage contact lens over the use of pad and bandage and remove BCL once there's epithelial healing, maybe after 72 hours and dispose it taking proper precautions. And the cleaning of instruments and machines of the CXL should be, uh, one should follow manufacturer's guidelines because these are, uh, you know, it, uh, the AMC and CMC depends on all these. So manufacturer's guidelines is something which is very important. As far as fake KIL is concerned, it is just like a cataract procedure. It's not an obvious aerosol generating procedure. So for patient evaluation, similar guidelines are to be followed. And uh, OT etiquettes also same as cataract surgery, like triple layered mask and cap and gloves and sterile count. And uh, one should prefer topical anesthesia, but one can do it under block as well. And for uh, intraoperative in phacic IOLs, as in cataract surgery, one should use povidone iodine and drape the eye appropriately. Viscoelastic should be used over the cornea so that it avoids frequent installation of saline over the cornea. And so aerosol generation is uh, prevented. Then uh, one should handle the equipment carefully so as to avoid injury with sharp instruments, just like when we do in any HIV case or anything like that. So one should be careful with, while handling the sharp instruments. The, the ensure that fluid is collected in the pouch and not spilled on the floor and the operation table should be sanitized in between cases. And as far as post-operative care is concerned, routine post-operative instructions and medication should be, uh, should be done. Uh, one can consider an early tapering of steroid and avoid NCT in follow-up and try to minimize number of visits uh, as far as practically possible. I would like to acknowledge the efforts of uh, all the uh, people who were involved in preparing this refractive surgery guidelines, Dr. Pooja Khamar, Dr. Namitra Sharma, Dr. Rohit Shetty, Dr. Mahipal Sazdev, and the whole AIOS refractive writing committee, and also would like to acknowledge the efforts of uh, the GC and uh, the and Nepal and uh, Rakhi who are working at the AIOS headquarters. Thank you very much.